Fred, welcome. These are familiar risks. What do you think increases the potential fallout uh, as we look towards 2022? Well, I, I don't think there's been a U.S. president in the last 30 years uh, since the Cold War who's faced such a combination of geopolitical risks uh, with uh, Russian troops at 100,000, maybe going up to as much as 170,000 outside Ukraine, January, February, the risk of an invasion. You have China bearing down on Taiwan simultaneously. And anyone who thinks you can separate those two things doesn't understand how close the two leaders of those countries are right now, President Xi and President Putin, and their intelligence services. And then third, you have uh, Iran uh, reaching the 60% enrichment level, uh, they are only allowed up to 4% under the uh, treaty that they've signed, and 90% is a bomb. No one knows what the Israelis might do if they see that, uh, that this is moving ahead. But I think, Kelly, what really makes this even tougher is it comes at a time of uh, not only external challenge but domestic weakness for the Atlantic, for, for sorry, for uh, the United States. Yeah. Uh, and and you have the midterm elections coming up. Uh, you have the con continued dispute over the election. You have the January sixth anniversary. So I think it's just the com combination of all of this coming together at the and same time that has got people worried. I, I would add you have an American public that's not that keen on intervention, which has been true for probably a hundred years, but seems especially true after both the Trump years and some of, you know, look what Biden did with Afghanistan. There's a sense that, you know, is that sense going to be shaken? What, what do you think the U.S. would do if Russia invaded Ukraine? What do you think the average American would want the president to do? Well, let's go to the Amer average American, then let's go to the president. So you are absolutely right, Kelly, that this is a time of international diffidence uh, for the United States, doesn't really want to get deeply involved, certainly not militarily involved regarding Ukraine or Taiwan, uh, and uh, and our adversaries know that. And Afghanistan, for them, uh, whether they're reading this right or not, they see this as a as a sign of U.S. weakness, and they see it as a sign also that the Biden administration is very focused on its issues at home, which is understandable. But this might be that could mean that 2022 is a rare moment for President Xi on Taiwan and President Putin uh, in Ukraine to get what they really want for their legacy, and and and. Um, uh, and, and what can we do about it? Well, I think the administration is acting wisely in terms of uh, diplomacy. Uh, I think the call yesterday at Putin's initiative, he's trying to keep the pressure on. There are going to be talks uh, January 10th, pr probably in Geneva between the U.S. and uh, Russia, followed by talks on the 12th uh, NATO-Russia uh, Council in Brussels, and then followed by OSCE talks among European allies. That's all really good. Uh, but what is it that's going to force uh, Putin to stand down? Uh, at this point, it isn't military action on the U.S. It's that one has to ratchet up what he sees as the cost so that it becomes prohibitive to him. At this point, I think that Putin is not going to consider the cost prohibitive until, unless he gets something diplomatic out of that. And we can't give what he wants, which is a promise that Ukraine would never come into NATO uh, and a promise that we would never expand NATO further into the region because, of course, we believe that's the sovereign choice of individual nations. Hey, Fred, certainly a lot of conflict here. You uh, compared the situation with uh, China, Russia, and Iran to a Gordian knot. That's a metaphor that usually implies some type of bold action needs to be taken. So is there a bold action that President Biden can take here? And does he have the political capital in D.C. to take action? Um, the, 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 it's a really good question. It does normally... Uh, require bold action. That's what a Gordian knot requires. But bold action doesn't necessarily have to be b dropping a bomb on somebody's head. It could be, uh, for example, in the case of Ukraine, getting weapons to the Ukrainians now before the action takes place against them, uh, moving more troops into the Baltics or neighboring countries to Russia that are in NATO now, and saying to Putin, look, you've escalated up. We want you to de-escalate. We want you to cause the diplomatic path. But we're not going to do nothing. We're going to show you what how high the costs are going to be for you. So the bold action doesn't have to be uh, military response, which is not going to come, but just really signaling that there are uh, actions, sanctions, and otherwise that are just going to be too high for you to bear, and making that clearer with allies in coordination, uh, you know, uh, to the extent one can, while not being able to lie to the Chinese or the Russians that we ourselves are going to take some military action, because uh, as Kelly was indicating, the U.S. people wouldn't be 
behind that. And I think this administration has made clear that that's not in the cards. And I wonder on the China front, Fred, if they wouldn't just wait the situation out. They seem to anticipate the U.S. becoming weaker uh, financially, militarily. Why make a move on Taiwan now if they anticipate it could be easier in five or ten years? Uh, I think that's right. Uh, the other thing, look at China's year. They have the Winter Olympics coming up. They certainly don't want any trouble before that. And then there's this window between the Winter Olympics and uh, their party congress. The party congress in October is where President Xi will become president for life, more likely than not. Uh, coinciding, by the way, with our midterm elections just a month later. Uh, and I think a lot of people are seeing uh, uh, the moment of danger coming after the point he becomes president for life, but certainly not before um, before the Winter Olympics. Uh, and he may not have to take military action. Uh, I think the Chinese have a lot of different ways to apply pressure on Taiwan uh, over time. What he doesn't want to see is anything moving in Taiwan that looks like a permanent form uh, of, of independence or sovereignty. All right. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.